Mr. Mazou, you're the uh, assistant of the High Commissioner for Operations of the UNHCR. Um, you're here at Ignite. Uh, what is your experience up till now? No, no, very interesting experience because you, here you have uh, a group of people who, not, who do not uh, always meet. You have business people, you have NGOs, you have UN, you have... And, and to have all coming together to see how you can look at jobs in, uh, in fragile context is, is really something, something great and unique, I would say. Yeah. The central theme is reimagine jobs. Yes, yes. What comes to mind first? Um, first, definition of job, because you, you do have people who find themselves in situations where they are working in informal context. Uh, they are doing jobs, but what kind of jobs? And how can we make sure that they continue to do jobs, but jobs which are fulfilling for them, jobs which pay them well, jobs which make them feel uh, respect for, for themselves? So, so that's what we all need to, to do. Um, everybody wants to work because it's part of what we all do. But, but how do we make sure that we, uh, we, we, we transform that, formalize that, in some cases that's the, the issue, in a, in, a, in a way that is helpful for everybody. What can UNHCR do? The first thing we do is, is to make sure that refugees are not only seen as people who are receiving humanitarian assistance, because right now that's the thing. You, you find yourself in asylum, be it uh, coming from, uh, from Myanmar or coming from, uh, from, from Venezuela or coming from Ukraine or coming from, uh, from, from DRC in, 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 uh, in uh, the central part of Africa. Uh, you, you, you cross a border and then you are seen as somebody who is only going to receive humanitarian assistance. You happen to have been a barber in your, in your, in your country, you happen to have been a seamstress in your country, a tailor and you want to be able to continue. So, so you need support for that. So you need humanitarian support, probably at the beginning, but you need to get the support that allows you to be on your feet, stand on your feet, and be able to, to, to fend for yourself. That's what you want. So you need that kind of support. So that's what we are trying to do. We have, we've started now a partnership with the uh, International Finance uh, Corporation, uh, IFC. They are here. They're actually one of the partners of this, uh, of this conference. Uh, we've started a partnership with them to, to try and, 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 and make sure that we, we do better to, to make sure that people can have jobs, but also that we bring to uh, situations of for displacement, refugees internally displaced, businesses from, from all over the world. And you want to, to bridge the gap with the private sector? We want to make sh first understand that we define the private sector in its broad definition, meaning a barber who has a barber shop in a camp, in a refugee camp, is a private sector actor. That's the first thing we want to make sure that we do. And then from there, the kind of support that this person will get will, will, will change. Um, and then we want to bring more, there are quite a few already, but we want to bring more private sector actor, external private sector actor, to a situation where you have refugees. That being said, we should all also keep in mind that globally right now, the majority of refugees are urban setting. So what they need often is jobs. And what they find themselves often is in situations where they have informal jobs, uh, poor quality job, uh, and we have to try and make sure, encourage governments, encourage companies, make sure that they have better jobs than what they are having. How do you do that? You do that first by talking to companies. Um, there are many companies which have understood that uh, they should employ uh, people who find themselves in, in exile. Uh, often it's the migrants who are seen as people who are looking for, for jobs and somebody who is a refugee is expected not to be looking for, for, for a job. But what we're saying is that you can have somebody who is a refugee in a country and, 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 uh, and, and needs a job. We also um, help uh, change a bit people's mindset by saying that um, refugees are also people who bring a lot of uh, knowledge, a lot of expertise, a lot of experience. It's not because you cross a border that, that you're forced to cross a border that suddenly all your knowledge disappears. So you can contribute quite a lot to uh, the economy of the country which uh, is receiving you. So to talk, to explain that, to make sure that people understand that is also part of what we're trying to do. You work a lot in conflict situations? We work in conflict situations because unfortunately um, the conflict situations are often situations where you have a lot of internal displacement and uh, 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 people fleeing into, into neighboring countries. 
Um, unfortunately, last year we passed the 100 million mark in the terms of number of people who are displaced internally and across, across borders. So unfortunately, that is expanding. There are many factors that we see which are also accelerating the displacement. Um, the economic situation uh, as a result of the Ukraine crisis is also a factor that is uh, accelerating. Uh, so all the uh, weather events that we're seeing, the floods uh, that, that we're seeing, um, uh, climate change is also having an impact on, 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 on displacement. So these are all the causes that we see. So it's, it's conflict, but it's also many other causes that are linked uh, to, to that. And how do you do that? How do you, how do you manage to work in conflict situa situations and help the people that need help most? Uh, you, we, we, we are present with partners. And, and I mean, this conference is about partnership. The way we work is about partnership. Partnership with governments, the, the number one responsibility to respond to uh, issues of displacement are governments governments which are providing asylum, governments in whose country we have displacement, so partnership with them, partnership with NGOs. NGOs are very, very active around the, the, the world, and what we're trying to push now also is more partnership with, with the private sector. What makes it challenging to, to create more uh, strategic partnerships? The understanding of other people's uh, way of thinking and way of operating. Uh, the, the, as UN, we operate in a certain way, NGOs operate in a certain way, the private sector operates in a certain way, government operates in a certain way. Objectives are not always the same, even if the goal eventually may be the same, but uh, the, the, the immediate objectives are, are sometimes a bit different. So it's to understand that and create context in which people can work together. For instance, if you the, the partnership that we're having now with the International Finance Corporation, we're starting with them, what we're doing is to take colleagues from the IFC, colleagues from UNHCR, put them together in one location, in a team, in a separate location. Uh, so they will have to work together, they'll have to understand each other, uh, and, and then I think that's where we will see uh, the most uh, effective uh, cooperation between the two organizations for the benefit of displaced people.